Welcome to Developer Diary Video 4. Uh, Nineveh, tell us what we're doing today. Okay, so today we will be learning how to set up a scene in Unity to play 360 video inside the Oculus Quest. So for this video, you're going to need a 360 video clip, one that you shoot yourself or you find online. And Matt can talk a little bit about what Oculus recommends for the specifications for optimal video quality. Uh, well, the camera we uh, used is the GoPro Fusion. It has a max resolution of 5.2K at uh, 30 frames per second in monoscopic. And uh, we're pairing that with scenes from our model, which is in stereoscopic 3D. Uh, the reason we're pairing these two together is because you really need the 3D effect to be able to analyze the geometry of the model we wanted to show the user some of the real world locations that contain some of the resources they'll be exploring in the app. And for that, a monoscopic 360 video we found was fine. We didn't need the 3D effect. You would also need a 3D camera if you wanted to go 3D. So you can see the cameras moving all over the place, even though the actual camera is fixed, but we get a 360 view so you can look wherever you'd like. The footage we shot on location, we use the GoPro software to do all the stitching for the 360 panorama. And then for editing, we take it into Adobe Premiere just to clip it and to process it and to give us the standards that we need to be able to bring it into Unity. I did some additional processing in Adobe After Effects just to remove the tripod and anything else we didn't want in the clips. So scenes from the model uh, were created in Blender where you can pretty much set your resolution and frame rate to whatever it needs to be. We found that a slightly lower resolution but a higher frame rate when you're getting up close to the model was preferred. It just provided a better performance inside the headset, the lower frame rate was just too juddery when you get up close to the model. For video, we found that higher resolution at a more standard frame rate uh, worked better just for clarity and detail. For demo purposes, we've just selected a clip that we uh, filmed. So the resolution is 4096 by 2048, 30 FPS. This was just one of the resolutions we tested and was still in the project at the time of making this video. Final quality will be 5120 by 2560, which is the recommended resolution for peak performance in the Oculus Quest. The recommended max bit rate for the Oculus Quest is 150 Mbits. Uh, recommends not to go above that. However, we use 60 megabits per second just to keep the file sizes small enough for the app. Now that we have our processed uh, video clips, I'll throw it to Nineveh to tell us about bringing them into Unity. All right, so using the same project as our past videos with the Oculus integration package already imported into our project and our assets, we are going to start by opening a new scene and we are going to add the OVR player controller prefab into the scene. So that's our player object and acts as our eyes and body inside the scene. So we don't really need the main camera anymore. We can just delete that. All right, so before we get started with anything, we're going to import our video clip. So into the asset folder. So I'm gonna bring up my folder with my objects. So we have the video clip and two scripts, which I'll get into at the end. So just importing them in. All right, so to our scene, we're going to add the video player game object. So in the inspector, we see that we can set a video clip inside the component. So I'm going to set it to the video I just imported. And you can see at the bottom, there's a render mode and it says we are set to render texture. So we're gonna use the render texture mode to render our video, but we're going to need to create 
a render texture to add to our component. We're going to right click on the assets folder and create new render texture. And you're going to set the size of the render texture to the resolution of your video. So the resolution of our video was 4096 by 2048. So I'm going to set the size of my render texture to be the same. I'm just going to rename it so I can find it easily in the inspector to video texture. And then we can go back to the video player and set our render texture to the target texture field. Uh, for the audio, we're getting audio directly from the video. And you can see that it's uh, recognized the track right there. Yeah, there's also an option to include a separate audio source with an audio clip that you would import in, but we're just going to use direct sound. All right. So also on our video player object, we're going to add the OVR overlay script. So this is a script that's provided by Oculus that provides a better 360 video performance for the headset. So I'm going to set the current overlay type to be underlay and set the shape to Equirect. Make sure there's the default Rex in the texture Rex uh, option. So uh, now that we have the video set up, it's not displayed in the scene yet. So if we want to set the video to surround the player, we're going to need to make it the skybox of our scene. So we're just going to go under OVR player controller and the center eye anchor like we did in past videos, uh, get the skybox component. And we see here that we need a material. So we don't have a material yet for our video, so we're going to need to create one using our render texture as well in that material. So we're going to right click and create a new material. I'm just going to set it to video material. And this material type is going to be of skybox panoramic. And in the spherical HDR, we're going to set it to our render texture that we created before. So this is going to set the video to be the material. And once the material is applied to the skybox, our player will be surrounded in 360 degrees by our video. So I'm just setting the material here. And yeah, so if you build the scene right now, it'll work inside the headset and it will play back the video for you. I'm going to add the scripts that I created to play and pause the video toggling with the touch controllers button one. So that's either the A or X button on the controllers. So this is me just saving the scene. So you need to save your scene so it exists inside the project. So you could build it as is right now, but I'm going to add a couple more options to make it a little bit more interactive. So to the video player, I'm going to add the video manager script that I created. And as well to the scene, we're going to make an empty game object that's going to hold our input manager script. And then we'll attach the input manager script to that game object. For the video manager, you're going to drag the video player game object into the inspector and set it in the script. So now we can go over what the video manager and input manager scripts are and how they work to help us pause and play the video inside the headset. So we have our two scripts here. So for input manager, I'm basically just checking to see if the player is going to press the button one it's called inside of the Oculus mapping for touch controllers. So that could be the A button or the X button. So for the video manager script, this is our simplified version of a video manager script because we're just playing one video for this sample scene right now. So we have a couple of variables. So for the list of videos, which is the type of video clip, we don't use it in this video. This is just if you have multiple videos that you want to browse through. So we can ignore that variable for now. For the second variable, it's just a Boolean that I created to check whether the video is paused or not. And you can see that we have a getter and setter for that variable. We have our private video player variable, which we're going to grab in the awake function. So we're going to grab that game object by using the get component function. And then we have another function that we've made called 
pause toggle. So this is gonna check to see if our video is paused or not. So if our video is paused, we're going to play it, but if it's not paused, we're going to pause it. So that's basically what this function is doing. So we're checking the is paused property of the video player game object to see if the video is playing or not. So this is just gonna help us know what state the video is in. So that's a pretty simple script that we have, just checking to see if the video is paused or not, grabbing the video player game object. So we have our scene set up, so you can just build it right onto the headset. And you can test it out. Like you can change the script I have to like add different features like fast forwarding and scrolling back or going between videos. I just didn't go in that deep. So here I am going into the scene. So you can see here, I can look around and it's in 360 view. You can look up and around. And I'm going to pause the video with the A button. So you can see that it's paused. So you can just pause it and play it. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for video number five where we will be discussing the game logic for implementing some additional functionality in our app, as well as some UI elements to allow for additional user interaction.